Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Sister Susie, and uh, today is the 13th of November 2016. And I do have a couple of revelations that I want to share with you, and then uh, here it goes. I'm going to start with the one that uh, I received on the November 11, 11, 11. And that one was interesting because it involved Donald Trump. And anyway, it goes like this. The first one on the 11, 11. I found myself that we were in a train. It was a, a whole bunch of us. And the train, we were gathered up and um, the train was, was traveling. And, and this train is moving. I see all of us, we had brought food. And uh, everybody had brought different kinds of food. Whatever food you brought, you know, you, it was there. Everybody was just, you know, we just like a get together or something. And then I see uh, another lady brought two pieces of fish and the fish were salmon. And uh, so that was important. I think the Lord was wanting to reference John chapter six when he had a, uh, gathered other people on a hill. But anyway, as we continue to, you know, travel in this train, we now found ourselves that we were no longer in the train, but now we were seated on a hill. It was, a, uh, there was grass on the hill. It was just a little hill and we we're all seated and we we're waiting for something. And uh, there was a clock appeared and I, I saw the clock and we we're waiting for, for, for some reason, I don't know if we we're waiting for four o'clock, we were waiting for, for, for time to reach a certain time. And uh, so we were just talking over there. And as we are talking, uh, I now see a, a TV headline come in front of my view. It's like I was looking at a TV screen and I'm seeing that headline and the headline read something like this. It said, Trump blow plows the land. I'm going to repeat. Trump blow plows the land. And, and then that was that. Trump blow plows the land. And then after that, I see in the sky, we, like I said, we're no longer in the train. We're sitting on a hill. There were clouds. It looked like an evening sky. And these clouds, I saw faces of people. They were all, we were all surrounded by people. Like how is it, how it's said in Hebrews chapter 12, a cloud of witnesses. And I saw the faces and one particular face is zoomed out, you know, with a cloud. And then it did a wink. It winked. And as it winked, there was a green light that flashed out of that eye that, that it winked. So I thought that was interesting that the wink and then the green light. So maybe the Lord is saying it's a God time or something like that. But so, but the most interesting part about this dream was about Donald Trump. And of course, the, the, the gathering of the, the two pieces of fish too, that's important. But, but I want to talk about Donald Trump. The Lord did show me this headline, Trump blow plows the land. And if you remember, my sister had a dream. I think uh, she did a video about the transformation of Obama whereby Obama was, was transforming into a bear and he was locked up somewhere. And then Don, uh, Michael, there was an emergency with Michael, you know, and uh, people were rushing, you know, uh, to, uh, to the hospital, something like that. Meanwhile, Obama was being transformed. And we thought that was, at that time, we were, particular time, we had thought that it was uh, Obama, something will happen to Obama, but apparently not. Uh, in this scenario, uh, because the law says Trump blow plows the land, it, it does to me, it seems that maybe something will happen to Trump, you know, because uh, maybe Trump or maybe he's talking about to the, his win is a blow to the world. I, I don't know. I'm not sure. But whatever is happening, there's something with Trump. And the Lord is saying he's a plow man. He is plowing the land. You know, like a farmer, if you want to plant uh, you you just don't scatter your seeds. I mean, they're not going to find that, you know, moisture soil. They're not going to find that. You have to plow it first to make it, you know, more, you know, conducive to the seed. And so, and that's what the Lord probably is doing is plowing the land, is plowing people's hearts, you know, because their heart is hardened, you know, it's, it's, it's stiff and he's breaking that, that hard ground. 
you know, so he's using Trump to do that. And, and like my sister saw in that, part, I'm, I'm going back to her dream that she saw that Michael, who in this scenario, I think is representing Obama. I'm not Obama. I'm, I'm sorry. He's representing Trump because, um, well, Trump is, well, is an entertainer and, and that's who Michael Jackson was. Trump is an entertainer. And also, uh, for the fact that his VP's name is uh, Mike Pence. So uh, the Lord is putting Trump and Michael Jackson together. He's symbolically bringing that up together. And so so that's what the Lord said. Trump law plows the land because, you know, he's working on uh, also the the plowing of the land. Also, it could be the great tribulation too. Uh, let me go ahead and, and read almost nine, almost nine verse. I'm going to start from verse... Let me start from verse 11. And it says, In that day I will restore David's fallen shelter. I will repair its broken walls and restore its ruins and re rebuild it as it used to be so that they may possess the remnant of Edom and all the nations that bear my name, declares the Lord, who will do these things. And then it says, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when the reaper will be overtaken by the plowman. The reaper... The reaper is Jesus Christ. will be overtaken by the plowman, the one who was plowing the hard furrow ground, and the planter by the one trading grapes. So maybe the plowman is is, is the plowman and the trader trading, the man trading grapes. Maybe they are one and two different. We thought Murray is one person, but apparently maybe there's two people. Plowman and the trader of grapes. Two different people. Plowman and trading of grapes. So new wine will drip from the mountains and from the from, from all the hills, and I will bring my people Israel back from exile. They will rebuild the ruined cities and live in them. They will plant vineyards and drink their wine. They will make gardens and eat their fruit. I will plant Israel in their own land, never again to be uprooted from the land I have given them. Praise God. So the Lord is saying, you know, that, you know, Trump's blow plows the land. So could Donald Trump be the plowman? And then not only is the plowman coming, looks like the trader of grapes too. Now the trading of grapes, we know that's the, you know, the great tribulation right there. So we are just right there at the very end of these things being, um, being happening we gotta remain in the lord you know stand very 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 strong and steady in him so and then okay i'm gonna go ahead to another dream that i had on um let me see what on the 12th and this one is talking about uh ice chunks. i mean i saw huge huge ice chunks chunks of ice falling Okay, in this room, there was me and my sister and uh, some other people. We were outside looking and um, just we were just talking. And all of a sudden, we saw this humongous cloud. It came over and this cloud was kind of dark and it was kind of bubbly. For some reason, it was uh, for some reason, this cloud was kind of bubbly. And it was just moving above the houses. As it began to move, I'm looking at this huge cloud with bubbles in it, uh, I see it's, the, you know, like the storm began to fall. And the storm, instead of falling just like water, like rain or just little ice, it wasn't so. It was humongous, huge chunks of ice were falling. And these huge um, chunks of ice were falling on people's houses. And all the houses were being destroyed with these huge chunks of ice falling to the ground. And we began to run and we were praying and repenting. Forgive us, Lord Jesus. All of us were we were repenting. All of us were praying. I mean, in this moment, I, I mean, the only thing you can do is repent and pray for the Lord to help. I mean, that's all anybody, we, uh, that's what we were doing. And then, you know, it was so tremendous, you know, that it woke me up. You know, the intensity of this huge stone, I mean, huge ice falling that it woke me up, but I didn't open my eyes. Uh, my eyes were still closed and I still, it still continued. Now this time around, my eyes are closed and I'm awake. I see fireworks, 
fireworks. And these were not just now uh, eyes, but I now see fireworks, you know, uh, like it is with um, uh, Independence Day, July 4th fireworks. I began to see those. Now, that, that after I saw the fireworks, it, the dream ended or the vision ended. So what did I get from this? What I got, I'm thinking, you know, because fireworks, remember, is, um, you know, July 4th is Independence Day. The Lord is saying our deliverance, our Independence Day is coming. When this storm maybe maybe hits, that's when our deliverance will come. Um, let me go ahead and read Revelation 16. I'm not going to read all of it. I'm going to read from verse 16, from verse 19, Revelation 16, verse 19. And then it says, the great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, huge, each weighing about a hundred pounds fell on the people and they cursed God on, on account of the plague of hell because the plague was so terrible. And I tell you what, that's what definitely I saw. I saw a terrible, terrible hell, hellstones. And, um, and now after that, I saw the, the fireworks. So the fireworks, July 4th, Independence Day. For the people of God, it is coming. Absolutely, it is coming. And and we're almost at the end here. You know, I urge people who do not have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior to really have him right now. This is the moment to really be on the winning side. And that's the the, the side of Yeshua. It's not a time to... to, to um, to be lukewarm. It's not a time to to be sinning. Is it? It's a time to to really give it all. Give all your life. I mean, just surrender everything to your. I mean, your heart, your soul, your mind, your to the Lord. This is that moment because He is the only one who can save us. And uh, so, and also, uh, so today I've been having a. a well, let me let me go ahead and tell tell you about this dream about today. I saw a solemn assembly. I saw where all and today too the the storm again. I saw another storm. So I, I think this storm is very very close. So let me begin with this dream today that I that I had. We were walking on this rod, and this rod was golden. Um, it was a it wasn't made of a tar. It was a it's a large rod like a highway, but it's not tar. Like, you know, tarmac. No, it was a different material. And it was a little bit golden. And it, we're all walking, not only me, all of us are walking on this rod. And once again, I see the setting of the sun. The sun was just, uh, just about to go down the horizon. And I see the clouds. It was, you know, bloody. For ex I mean, like nowadays, maybe because of the Nibiru, the, the clouds has been getting dark. I mean, not dark, like a reddish tint. And I saw that it was dark, I mean, like a reddish tint. And as we are walking on this uh, golden road, all of a sudden I see a huge dust storm. And this dust storm is coming real quickly. From the west side, there is a dust storm coming. And I see this dust storm, it zapped over, over all of us that we are walking on this golden road. As it zapped, like how a bat would do. It would come down like that. That's how this dust storm did, like it zapped us. And um, when it did that, we were no longer on this golden road. Now we found ourselves on a narrow road, all of us. We are now on a narrow road. And this narrow road on our right-hand side, I saw graveyard. Now, the reason why I think the Lord showed me graveyard there is because it's danger, death, you know, because this storm is coming to kill. I I do believe so. It's not it's not a simple thing. This is danger. We are in dangerous ground here. And I see a graveyard on our side and we are walking on the on a narrow road. We continue to walk. As we continue to walk and now find ourselves that we were all gathered up in some kind of a place. Well, it could have been a church, but I didn't see any walls. I didn't see any walls, but I saw rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of people seated down. That's what I saw. Um, seated down in chairs, like how you would in a church. 
chairs. So there were rows and rows and rows of chairs and people were seated down. And I was like thinking, maybe this is just a little bit. I kept on looking to see how far and it was just so many people. So there was a gathering, a solemn assembly or a gathering of people gathered up. Um, so that's very important because that's what we're waiting on for the Lord to gather us together. And when he does that, then we're going to be gone. He's, he's going to take us from that. So... So that's what I wanted to, to talk about to uh, the dreamer that I had today, that, you know, the solemn assembly, he's, we've been gathered up in this place. It's a spiritual church. It's, it's not with wars. I didn't see any wars, but we're all there. Um, so praise God. Our, our, our gathering is pretty, pretty, pretty soon. Now, also two days in a row, the Lord has been speaking about my uncle, that his job is over. Two days in a row, the same message. Two days in a row. You know, um, the first day, uh, his wife came over and talked to me and told me that his job is, uh, your uncle's job is finished. And um, and then I think I didn't get it. Today, now, I met him and I was talking to him and I was telling him that, he, you know, he was kind of sad because he has a good job and his job was over. And I was telling him that, you know, this is not a time to be, worried about jobs, the time to surrender your life to Christ. And I was telling him to repent. And so we've come to that point whereby people's jobs probably are going to be over. I mean, that's the two days in a row. He's talking to me about that. People's jobs are about to end. And what is going to cause that people's jobs should end? And like I said, this man has a really good job, very comfortable. And, um, his job is about to end. That's what two days the Lord speaks about that. And uh, so it's a time to really, really stick to the Lord. Anything, any kind of security or safety that people have put, I mean, like for themselves to, to make them comfortable, it's not going to help them at all. It's not going to help them, you know, because these things are the comforts of the world are being taken out. You know, the comforts of the world are being taken out. And right now, we are so close to going home that we have to be really, really prayerful and repent us every single day. We got to repent because we are human, you know, repentance and forgiveness of those that have hurt us. And I will also say again, before I close, please, everyone out there, if you're listening right now, things are about to change. They are, it's already begun to change with, with Trump being in power. It's not ordinary. I mean, I mean, I'm not saying it's not ordinary for him to be in power. No, but, but, but something is, there, there's a deception that is going on that we are, we are all yet to see how it's going to unfold. And so we have to be uh, found on a solid ground, a solid ground, because the ground, any other ground apart from Yeshua, Jesus Christ will sink, will sink. So have him, Yeshua, in your heart today, repent of your sins so that you can make it into the kingdom. It's a beautiful kingdom. We were all walking on this road and it's just, we, we haven't reached there yet, but this road is beautiful. In itself, it's beautiful. In itself. What about if we enter through the gate? How beautiful will the place be? So let us strive to make it, to enter the gate of heaven. Okay, so that's all I have today. And uh, I bless you all in Jesus, Jesus' name. And uh, I love you guys. Until next time, this is Sister Susie. Bye-bye.